Okay, so this is the part two version of the video that I was making earlier today, which was the part one as to how to make it normal. So this part is going to go over colors, number plates, and everything else, especially hollow text. This is a way to make sure that your engines don't look so bland. So the first thing when it comes to changing color is that you will have two tools that you want to use. Well, mostly just one. There's something called color. So if you do that, it causes everything to fade. I usually use this when it comes to EM, uh, E2 chips that I don't want seen. And then you go to submaterial. Now, if you look at this, submaterial gives you a very large list of physics props and everything else. These are all the various colors and all the various materials that are based around this engine itself. So what you want to do is you want to select whatever color you want, such as, like, say, blue, which is what I'm going to use. You want to left-click on the engine. And this makes whatever the color you chose blue. Now, I want to do this again, but I want to choose a different color. I don't know if you guys will have this, but this is for my personal choice. There are two colors that I love. There are two submaterials I love using the most. Gold player and ice player. Gold player and ice player are from, known, are from Team Fortress 2, which are usually used for the Saxy Awards and all. So I'm going to use the ice player. I'm going to make the grab rails. And here's the problem is that with something as large as this, is that you get a lot of the you get a lot of stuff so you can't really see exactly where you what you're doing so I've made the grab rails up here silver or chrome whatever you see fit you can make them whatever color and because this is a demo I'm not really going to go in depth with it but that's how most people change colors if you have an s props thing such as say a plate like this most people would use color now I'll show you what happens when you use color set it to none make it red notice how the grid is still there now if you take sub material you'll see s props grid and then what you do is you select it and it gets rid of the grid why does it do that because what you're doing is you're overriding the previous your the previous material that is preset on here which is the grid, and you're overriding it with this, the ice player in this case. So, next part is we're going to go over lights. What you're going to do is you're going to go to wire, and you're going to look up lamp. Most people would use lights. Lights are the incorrect one as they don't have any brightness to it. And we're going to use lamps. Now what I have is I have several presets. So for the one that you want to use, Pardon me. You'll have rope length, 64, or whatever. You can have it set to zero because you're not going to use rope. You can have FOV, which I have set to 500, and the distance, which is set to max. And the brightness is set to 500 as well. Because what you want this thing to do is you want this lamp to be able to shine brightly throughout tunnels when you're going through them. So what you're going to do is you're going to spawn it in, and then you're going to hold C and disable collisions on it. And then you're going to position it, go into no, no clip, you're going to lift it up and position it inside the train itself. Get as center as you can or as possible as you want. I don't know. I don't really care. It's your engine. You be as creative as you want. And there you have it. It sits there. And then what you will do is you will go up to your control stand, which I find to be the easiest place to do it. And you will go back to advanced button, which if you listen to my previous one, you will have saved. And you will find a button that is like this, which is a rocker switch. And you will have that set to toggle as well. I have it set to main light. And what you'll do is you'll spawn it, say, on the body of the engine. Because watch what happens if you spawn it on the control stand. It works. It shouldn't have, but it does. So, now what you'll do is you'll take your wire tool and you'll go over here to the lamp and you'll see all of these. And you will go to on. You will left click on that. And you will say select it. And you go back to the light and click on that. And bam, it works. 
Now, what you need to do is to prevent any issues when you are spawning this in. You're going to have to parent these both. Now, just like the MU Master Switch, you're not going to parent this thing to the gate under the train. You're going to parent it to the body. The light, however, can be parented to the can be parented to the gate under the train, which is now done. See? Next part are number plates. What you do is you go to wire and you go to expression two, and under mags pack there will be accessories and more. And under there, there are several num plates. We're going to use an EMD and right here. Now this spawns in a basic number plate. But you don't really need to use. So what you want to do is to edit it, you go, you right click it, and it will take you back into the E2. You go all the way down, and you find this. If first duped, duped finish. This is where you can set your color, and your backing, and everything. So, number wise, let's make this a random number like, um, 0, 3, 4. Now what you'll do is you go to color. Now, if you saw what happened when I spawned it in, it made it orange. We don't want orange. So what we can do is we can make it white, which if we set it to zero comma zero, it'll make it black, which means that we need to set it to 255 comma 255 comma 255. And it will make it white. Now, the next thing you do with this is you will take it and you'll spawn it on the engine itself. And this will weld it just like I did, just like I mentioned earlier. And there you have a basic number plate for large fonts such as this. To make it smaller, what you'll do is you'll right click it again and you'll go to scale. Usually I'll put it at one, one, because the vec it is in scale vector of X, Y, Z, not just X, Y or anything else. What you'll do is you'll see these, it, these values such as use backing, white backing, white frame and everything else. So. What you do here is for use backing, you select one and you save it, spawn it in. You notice how it has a backing now. And what you do is you right click it and you use white backing You go to zero and see it makes it black. You can really play around with something like this, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave it as this. Or if we want to do it, we can do white frame. Essentially, what this means is that it, it goes through the various values and such. So you get something like this. See? A white frame. Or, if you set it to zero, there's no frame. And if you set it to two, there is there is also no frame. It makes it smaller, if anything. So let's just go with a white frame. Now, you can click it again, and there will be various skins. So let's see skin one which will change the font of the text itself in skin zero, which will make it more of a digital age. So let's go with skin two and let's delete that. Now what you will do is because you have saved it, what you can do is you can go up here to say the number plate and spawn it in. Now this is very large in comparison to where it should be and is very out of proportion. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click it and you're going to put the values of scale as 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And we'll save that. That'll make it smaller. Now, if that's too small, then to make life a little easier, you just add a 7 in front of it. And that's a bit better. See? And then you have that. Now, in order to make sure that these stay here, you are going to also parent them to the, to the gate that is under the train. Now, when you parent these, they will not glow the green because you are parenting the E2 chips themselves. You are not parenting the actual text. So you have to make sure in, dur during this entire process, you should be doing constant checks such as advanced duplicating it, dragging it over here, and then unfreezing everything to make sure that nothing is getting lost. So now that that is done, now what you'll do is now our next part is going to be a uh, hollow text. So go to wire, go back to expression two, and you'll see right here there is advanced hollow text. 
when you spawn it in, it will usually say something like that. So, you right click it. And what you'll do is you'll see at the very top, there is text that you can add here. Now let's say this is just Gmod Express. Something basic like that, because there is someone on this server who has one. And then what you'll do is you'll change the font to whatever you see fit. I personally don't have a choice. Now, for color, it says vector, but it only has the one value, which is red. Set it to zero, because when you spawn it in, it'll keep that. However, that's only the material itself. So what we're going to want is we're going to want to go over here to tools and submaterial. And in this listing, you'll see various ones such as this. So let's find something that will work. So how about train base? Now, what you want to do is that you'll see mat and it'll spawn it in up here in the text. You copy that. And you, oh. and you go back to the E2. And you go to E2, right click, let right click it, and you'll see material. Then you copy this and paste that in on top of it. And when you spawn it in, it'll make it black. This is because it's as the base, which means that there's nothing else changed. Now, we can change the values. I'm sure this won't break it. See? That makes it white. So, you want to do that, and you spawn it on the engine as well. As easy as that. Now, now, to change the size and width and everything, you'll want to right click it and you'll see the height, the width, and the thickness. Now, what you can do is if you're up here, and you'll see it says Magnum's Hollow Text. You just don't see the E2 on it. You right click it, and let's say I want to make it 20. And I want to make the width 20 as well. Upload and exit, and it'll make it 20. Next, which is the final part that I'm going to show today, is going to be how to make it smoke. Now what you'll need is you'll need a particle, advanced particle control, which is right here under particle controller. And you'll have several lists and effects. Now as far as I can remember, I have it set to, I believe you will have these three add-ons, those Calico's train particles, Monks trains and unions. Union is a close friend of mine. Let's go with Calico's and it'll o open a PCF which has several versions of it. You'll also have Monks trains which has the exact same thing. So let's go with Clag Black Billowy. And when you spawn it in, when, when, when you spawn it in, so to spawn it in, you don't left click, you right click. It will spawn it in like this. Now, you want it set to a key, such as period or plus, like right here. Now, what you will do is you just put that on. Actually, let's change this to like period or something. Yeah. All right. And then you just press period to stop it. Now, what you'll do is you'll want to spawn a block like this. Just an S-props block. You want to position this. Actually, you want to get rid of it. Get the block first. Position it. And then spawn it right in the middle. And stop it. Next, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go back into wire. And there will be something called a numpad output. What the numpad output does is that it lets you connect the starting part of this which you can then wire to the RLC. So I have it set to plus, so let's set it back to period. Now see, whenever I press period, it's toggled. Now, what this will do is that now that this is on, what will happen is that we need to wire this, the numpad, which was set to A, over here to the RLC, which is labeled as clag. This is what you want to select it as. And you'll see that it is red. Then what you do is you carry this over. Go into no clip. 
and you'll want to put this inside or under the chimneys or the smokestacks, whatever you want to call them. Now, the only issue is that once the model is in the way, you will have a bit of a hard time positioning and moving it around. So make sure that once you do it, you're, you're just fine. And then what you'll do is if you press period, you'll see that the smoke comes out. Now, we're going to make two of them because it has two smokestacks. So grab another block, grab another numpad, and then grab another particle emitter. Just stop it there. Notice how it doesn't disperse easily. And then what you'll do is you'll go back to wire and you'll input A, clag output. And then you'll select everything and then carry this back and put this under the smokestack. And there you go. Now, Back to parenting. What you'll need to do is you will also need to parent the gates for the E2s. You'll see it right there. And right there. And then you go into the model. And you parent the cube, the number pad, and the plate. It will say plate. That's how they that's how they differentiate. Cube, plate number pad and you go back under here and you parent it to the gate now the only now if you hear a thudding noise that's a good thing because it means it's parented now the biggest issue is that when you spawn these in the e2s will will pop back up so let's spawn this in copy spawn it in next to it notice how the e2 is sitting right there and is somewhat unsightly because it's a bit annoying Oh, and if it's smoking like that, don't worry about it. It's just there for graphics. So what you want to do here is, as I told you, get your color and have it set to white. And for render FX, go to fade fast. And you'll find the E2 and click on it. It will not get rid of the text itself. It will only make sure that the model of the E2 chip itself, once you spawn in the engine, will therefore disappear. So, now watch what happens. And notice how it's disappeared. That's the only thing you need to do. And as far as I can tell right now, this is all you need to do in order to keep everything well. You can add more details such as cables, uh, plates, and more. But this is the starting way for how to get the diesel to run. So now we sit back in the engine. And we start it up. And we watch the smokestacks. And there you go. Now you have a fully running diesel locomotive that you can use on FCNN and other places. Now, I would highly recommend that you learn a bit more about how to do steam locomotives and more. Because as fun as diesels are, steam locomotives are just as fun. The only downside with steam locomotives is that they are a real, uh, they're a real journey to try and put together. So once you're done with the diesel, try and look around. See if you want to build a steam engine. Just don't make it too complicated, because after all, my first one wasn't complicated at all. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope this helps you out in the future. And if you do decide to check out FCNN and more places like this, then you uh, get in good with the mods and don't cause any trouble. So, uh, I wish you all a good day. I hope that in the future this helps, and I'll see you in the next video.